Hey folks, what's going on? Sorry, I gotta charge my phone. I was just, it's kind of low, so. All right, let me turn the music down. Anyway, coming back with another video, and I had got a question while I was driving, so I was I wanted to wait till I was stationary to uh, pretty much do this video. And actually, um, the question was, um, the person know I run my business on autopilot in terms of the different accounts outside of the my operating state which is generally Ohio or Michigan those are the two that I spend the most time in but with my accounts in VA um, and my accounts in Georgia people want to know how am I able to uh, like collect payments collect those payments efficiently without you know the headaches and dealing with all these different other states and all of the just mechanics of running the business how am I able to uh, make sure that number one I get paid uh, Make sure that you know, I'm getting what's due and just overall Equating those numbers into the numbers with you know, the other states that I operate out of so and that's just for VA and uh, Georgia so I'm gonna go ahead and answer that question it's uh I don't know how technical this might be, but I want to make sure you understand. If I don't answer it to your liking, just let me know the parts you don't understand, and I could probably call you and kind of explain it to you. But um, basically, when I first started out in 2012, um, this was actually the part one of the question, but I'm going to just explain it. When I started out in 2012 doing this, uh, it took me a whole year really to be profitable, to make a profit. And and, and the really, really, the reason I say that, I'm sorry, is that um, I started making a lot of money, but I had knew upstairs that this money wasn't really my money. I knew I owed, you know, taxes. I knew I owed, um, you know, just overhead, uh, business costs, just personal living, you know, that type of thing. So I knew that I couldn't just take all of this money that was coming in and just go blow it, right? Because I wouldn't have a business, okay? So that's what you guys have to keep in mind because like many of you, I wasn't used to bringing in like, you know, five, ten thousand dollars a month and just residual money. Like I wasn't used to that, you know what I'm saying, coming from a job standpoint. So once I started making that type of money on a monthly basis, um, it was difficult because it was different moves that I wanted to make with the money. I had the mentality like, well, I can go buy this big ticket item, I'll just pay it back next month, or I just, you know, take it out of the money that I would pay myself, and I would just go ahead and do it. But see, the money that I was paying myself wasn't near as much as the money that was going out for business expenses, personal expenses, that type of thing, you know. And by the way, I take my personal expenses out of my personal income, okay? So I don't use business income for personal matters. I try not to at least. I have done it, but I try not to. And the minute I do that, I try to wire because I have a business savings. I mean, I'm sorry, I have a, a personal savings and a business savings. So with my personal savings, if I borrow money for myself out of the business, I try to call the automated system, which I can with the credit union. I call the automated system and I can have a check sent from one account to another account or just a straight ACH from one account to another account, okay? So ACH is like an automatic debit. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, paying a bill where they take the money out of your account on a consistent basis without you having to tell them. So that's kind of like, that's what's considered ACH. Or if you do a credit card transaction, that'd be considered ACH transaction. So, um, but if I do borrow money for myself, that's how I do it. I'll go ahead and the money that I borrow for myself out of my business account, which is rare, but I have done it, I'll go ahead and immediately pay it back out of my personal uh, savings back into the business. Because at the end of the day, those numbers have to add up. Now, I'm a receipt guy. Let me show you in case you guys don't, don't believe me. I'm a receipt guy. Okay. This is just a small fraction of the receipt. But I keep receipts on every every time I buy gas like this gas receipt up here I write how much the gas was uh, per gallon and right here I write how many gallons it was so and I do that for every receipt you guys because I'm a receipt type of guy uh, this is gas yeah 
a receipt no matter what city what town I'm in this is just a small select a select few I don't know if you guys can see that but yeah I write uh, yeah so I'm a receipt type of guy because I like at the end of the day when I do my numbers I like to know where the money went out to I'm real anal when it come down to numbers I'm really good with arithmetic or math or whatever I'm really good with numbers so oh, when it come down to my numbers I've already pre-calculated in my head it's just I have to remember the actual numbers because then my numbers could be off by the time I get back to the home office or by the time I get back home and get to tallying up things so uh, but anyway I hope I didn't go all over the place with that question um, as far as making sure I get what's owed it's just when the receivables come in I just make sure I receive what I was supposed to receive if not I place a call to them I shoot them an email let them know they was X and Y Z short and um, they'll just generally make it up you know on a side check or I let them go ahead and um, add it to the next month billing uh, I tend not to like to wait that long because then they'll forget that they owe it by the next time next month billing so I tend to try to get it as soon as I can get it from them okay without making it a hassle to them but making sure I get what to do so whatever system you guys want to set up with that um, just be my guest set it up whatever as long as it works for you okay um, but it's really not difficult running your company on autopilot running it where um, as long as you have somebody very, 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 very sharp. And I said that many times because the life of that business in that state can solely depend upon how your designated person, whoever your supervisor is or whoever you designate to to run that, to overlook the employees, to overlook the payroll. I mean, the payroll still come in to one central location but the payroll is collected through one person in these different areas that makes sense okay so for an example to give you an example if i have let's say five accounts in let's say hypothetically the state of texas then i'll have one designated person to handle all five of those accounts meaning to, to check for vacuums to check for the solutions to check for everything to deal with the client and then what they do is they give me the report card of what's going on well we low on the solutions here we need more of this we need more of that we need this and we need that and then I go ahead and I can place the order and then I'll have a ship because a lot of my my suppliers uh, are kind of nice nationwide some of them are nationwide and then I can have it shipped directly to the facility or I can have it ordered on store credit and then have it picked up by the actual like supervisor you know that I have designated to pick up stuff and kind of make decisions for me since I'm not in those areas so that's kind of how I move uh, independently I solely depend upon the designated person that I have designated for that specific area okay and they handle all of the accounts in that entire area that's all they do they pay quite well to do that um, a lot more than ten dollars an hour for that because it's just so much right and that's pretty much how it's done so they collect the payroll send the payroll in payroll don't, don't come to me the payroll goes to paychecks which is who does payroll for me okay um which is a payroll service you know they do uh a lot you can just look up paychecks.com without going into what they do they do a lot besides collect payroll okay um also through my company we offer instead of checks paper checks we offer uh check card that paychecks provide so that's for a direct deposit so that's what I offer for my people I find it very easy uh, it's the cost is low it's cost effective for me and uh, I don't have to worry about paper checks and you know they get their money a lot of times uh, uh, you know a lot of times time before they supposed to get it you know hit the card you know at a certain time uh, usually maybe like a day or so early and uh, they'd be able to access those funds so that's the unique thing about the direct deposit on a pay card so or if they have a bank account then we don't give them pay card we just go ahead and use the uh, the bank account that they have and have the money uh, wired to the bank account 
I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting sidetracked because there's a lot going on around me. Um, so that's how I'm able to really run this thing uh, on autopilot through the help of my people that I have designated in any given area. So um, hopefully that helped you guys out. Let me see if, if there's anything else I can kind of touch on. I think I pretty much covered it um, with that question. Um, if I didn't, again, just uh, let me know where you guys are stuck at and I'll go ahead and address it with another video or call you directly or shoot you an email to try to explain it to you because I really want you guys to get it. Um, because, you know, it's part of the setup process, you know. Um, as far as my banking, I do have banks in different areas, but uh, a lot of times the checks, oh, as far as collecting a payment, the checks are mailed in, okay? Now, a lot of my clients are starting to do it on a credit card, okay? Or like a check card where we can automatically debit the funds out of their account, okay? And that's what I was talking to people about on another video about being able to accept credit cards. Um, a lot of people are finding it easier for you to just deduct the funds from their account so they don't have to worry about cutting you the check, okay? Um, you can have that as an option when you when you go in and you talk about how you're going to collect payment when payment is due when you talk about the payment part of uh, Collecting it and when it's due and that type of thing with the client you can let them know that you offer the option of a, maybe like a PayPal or the option of um, You know collecting credit card information and doing an automatic uh, debit, you know once a month uh, for cert for services bill, you still invoice them, but you'll just collect the you'll just bill it. You, I'm sorry, you'll just go ahead and collect the payment, like an automatic debit out of their checking account or uh, savings. However, you guys have it set up. Um, but I have a lot of clients that we do that to. The vast majority still like to send them in. Um, I have it sent in into a PO box. If you guys don't have a PO box, you can get one. Or well, it's really called like a mailbox. Is it? Like, when you look it up, it looks like it'll be a physical address, but it's a mailbox, okay? Um, you guys can do that. Um, if you're just working from home and you don't have that, you can use, it's okay to use your home address, too. Um, I would prefer you probably do a P.O. box or a mailbox, but if you don't have the money to set that up right now, then you start with what you can start with. So, definitely, you can use your home address. Um, so... Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um, I'm just trying to think as I talk because I want to make sure I hit the points of that email as far as how I really like run this thing on autopilot. Once again, I solely depend upon my designated person in each area to report everything to me. So um, they're like my eyes and my ears. Um, I listen to what they say. I talk to them on a consistent basis to figure out what we're doing in the area, uh, what's going on. Uh, I talk to them about employee matters, talk to them about payroll matters, talk to them about the uh, solutions of vacuum cleaners, talk to them about which direction we're going to move into next as far as making our company better and different things, different techniques I might think of that I want to kind of execute on. Uh, so I communicate very well with those people. Uh, I like to randomly call my employees too um, because I keep it in the database because we saw, with the cleaning what you'll find out is is a high turnover rate employee wise in there because a lot of times people just stay with you just enough to get a pair of Jordans and then they leave and then a lot of people are loyal to you when you offer uh, uh, fair wages when you offer you know just a lot of perks of working with you like I like to do profit sharing at the end of the year and um, I didn't do that. I think I started profit sharing actually in 14, I think. 2014, I think I started profit sharing. Let me see. Yeah, 2014, I started profit sharing because uh, I was making, a, you know, quite a bit of money. So I figured, like, I can share the profits, you know, at the end of the year. So, and it's not a whole hell of a lot, but it's a... Uh, a strategy that I use that people can look forward to in addition to their W-2 or collecting their refund checks, right? It's just an addition. You don't have to do that, uh, but I find that to be very helpful. I also uh, 
And you guys don't have to do this. I'm just a different type of boss. I also like, uh, instead of giving somebody maybe a piece of paper and say, congratulations, you're an employee of the month, I might give you, you know, two pair of tickets to the Detroit Pistons game or the Detroit Lions game or whatever area, you know. If you're in VA and they got the Beyonce concert, I'll get some tickets or something like that. Like, I kind of keep up on what's going on because doing stuff like that make people want to work and go the extra mile for you okay and i'm a different type of employee a lot of times people say fabio you do too much for the employees but i look at it like how dale carnegie uh, i kind of learned a lot of the stuff from dale carnegie i'm sure he wasn't giving tickets but he did profit sharing uh he set a lot of people up that actually worked for him that became actual millionaires uh working for him because he not only just provided them a job he provided them an education he showed them what he knew and they began to come be they, they began to learn and become successful on their own right and that's how I am as an as an entrepreneur that's how I am as a person you know I genuinely have love for my employees but when they piss me off and when they do things I don't like I do get in their ass as much as I praise them for when they do good I get in their ass when they do bad right but it's a way to do it now. It's a way to do it. And uh, you guys just have to kind of watch that. <laughs> how you deal with your employees. That's a whole another video. But uh, hopefully I answered the question, man. That's how I'm able to delegate and work different cities and be in different states. And uh, running on autopilot without a hitch, without a problem. I'm Fabio Hart, the only person that could ever stop you from starting up your own dreams and making it to the top. Is you.